Like me, you've probably seen loads of videos comparing the cameras on smartphones, say the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the Pixel 8 Pro to the Samsung S23 Ultra. Hell, I've made those kind of videos. But this video is going to be a bit more extreme. We are going to see if the 15 Pro Max can kill off my Canon 90D. I'm going to be shooting this video on those two cameras, and I'm not going to tell you until right at the end which is which. They're both being shot in 24 FPS in 4K. So they are very similar, but I want you to see if you can pick the winner because of my eyes, there is one clear, clear winner. Now, when I started this channel back in September of 21, I only had one camera and that was an iPhone 12. Nothing so fancy as an iPhone 12 Pro. It was just a bog standard iPhone 12. And it was quite obvious one of the first things I was going to need to improve was the video quality. Once been making videos for about a year, September of 22 is when iPhone 14 came out. So it was also the year that ProRes came to iPhone for the first time. I went down to the Apple store on launch weekend and I bought myself a 14 Pro with one terabyte of storage on. I'd heard that the ProRes files were going to be huge and I didn't want to be caught out. I could often be recording for 20 or 30 minutes and those files could be 60, 70, 80, 90 gigs. Well, as it turns out, shooting ProRes on iPhone 14 was a complete waste of time. Yes, you could do it. Yes, the results were good, but you couldn't get files from the phone. There was one small problem. Obviously, you couldn't airdrop something that big. And the only way I found to get the files off the phone was by using that lightning cable and image capture on the Mac. But it was slow, unreliable and flaky and often failed anyway. So within a few weeks of buying the iPhone 14 Pro, just to use as the main camera on this channel, I switched off ProRes. I didn't ever record in it again because I just could not get the files off the phone. But then a little bit of luck came my way. I was over with my co-host on the podcast, Minus 16, and I was at his studio and I saw this Canon on the desk, I asked him about it, and he said he was selling it. So I bought the Canon 90D with three lenses from Alex. If you haven't checked his channel out, Alex Gearn Tech, it's a brilliant channel, go and have a look at it. I bought the camera from him, and the main thing was suddenly the footage I was shooting was usable. I could actually use the SD card, get the files off the phone, pop them into the Mac, and I was editing. So I get in good quality and meaningful ways of getting into professional workflow. And I used that Canon 90D for almost all of last year, of almost all of 2023. I shot the back end of 22 in it and virtually all of 23. And I say virtually all of 23, that is until scary fast. This could be the first time that you've seen one of my videos or even visited the channel. If it is, welcome along. It's lovely to have you come here and hopefully you'll want to become part of the Talking Tech team. And the best way to do that, of course, is by subscribing and turning on notifications. I put a video up once every week, generally on a Friday at the moment, and we could be talking about Android, iPhone, Mac. We just sit and have a great conversation. And one of the things that's a little bit different about our community to others, I've always felt, no matter how many comments I get, that if you're kind enough to view one of my videos and get involved in comment, I will reply to you. And so far, I don't think I've let anybody down. And we have got a great community here. The amount I learn from interacting and reading your comments, it helps the channel out a lot. So it's just my little way of saying thank you. And I say turn on notifications as well, because I always put a post up just before the video goes live in case YouTube forget to do it for me, just to remind you that a video is about to drop. And before we get back to scary fast and finding out about which camera I think is best to use on this channel, I've just want to mention to you about my free, totally free members newsletter. All I need from you are your details. There's a link to it below in the description. It's over at my website, talkingtechnaudio.com. Every Sunday afternoon, around about lunchtime, a 5, 10, 15 minute newsletter will drop, just talking about things that I can't really talk about on the main channel. Sponsors that approach me, things that have gone wrong, the ups and downs of being a content creator, me just moaning. If that sounds like it could be fun to you, don't forget, leave me your details and I'll be sure to add you to the main list. So, Get subscribed, turn on notifications. Now, let's go and find out what camera I'm going to use for the rest of this year on this channel. So much like you, I watched Scary Fast and then casually at the end, Apple just popped on the screen, shot on 15 Pro. <sighs> Everything changed. As you know, suddenly your feed on YouTube was full of creators shooting their video on the 15 Pro Max in ProRes and Log. Now, I didn't do that initially, and I'll tell you why. When I started the channel, I had no idea about photography, videography, editing. Cameras were a complete black area to me. I knew nothing about them at all. Since then, though, it's become a bit of a passion, a bit of a hobby. And I've been watching loads of videos trying to learn more about it. So when iPhone 15 Pro came along with 
blog and pro ways, I had a vague idea of what I was doing, but I wasn't confident enough initially to make videos to go up on the channel. So I worked casually in the background. Night after night, I downloaded the Blackmagic app, which is what Apple used, of course, to shoot their video on. And although I never would have the might and the brains and the technical wizardry and perfection that Apple had at their disposal, I was determined to make the best of it. I wanted to find out how good the camera on this phone was. And that got me thinking, would it actually be good enough to use as the main camera on this channel? Well, the Blackmagic app was the, the real tool that unlocked everything for me. Once you get used to using it, and working in log isn't for everybody, but once you've got used to it, I guess it's the amount of data you've got in there that makes the colors look sharper, more vibrant and punchy, the skin tone's more real. It just looks better once you've got used to using it. And by the way, the best conversion that I have found for getting the footage from the iPhone and Blackmagic app into Rec 709, which is what makes it look all colorful, is the Blackmagic LUT that's available within the app for free. That's a tip for me, just download it and airdrop it off the phone over to your Mac, it is brilliant. So then I gradually became more confident and I began posting videos to the channel shot on 15 Pro Max. Now, all the while I've been posting videos, no one had ever asked me or commented on what camera I was using or how it was shot. The first two videos I put up using the 15 Pro Max, I suddenly began getting comments. So then I began to seriously think, and this is towards the end of last year, should I use it as the main camera? Surely a camera on a phone, albeit a thousand pound flagship phone, can't be as good as a dedicated DSLR camera, can it? I know the Canon 90D is a very mid-range camera, probably around about a thousand pounds new-ish when it was out, I think six, seven years ago. Tech's moved on, six or seven years ago is an age in tech. So then I thought, well, maybe, the iPhone is cutting edge. Maybe this is as good as it gets, even though it's a phone. Don't be caught in the old ways of thinking. Move forward, be contemporary. So as I say, the last couple of videos last year on the channel, I shot on the 15 Pro Max. Then this year, the first video of the year, I shot back on the Canon and I sat back and had a look. And that is when I made the decision. I am never going back to shooting on the Canon. You are now watching a video that is shot on the 15 Pro Max. Most of this video has been shot on the 15 Pro Max with just the small bit in the middle, the call to action where I was talking about subscribing, that was shot on the Canon. I'd be really interested to know what you think of the quality. I think this is the way to go. Working with the SSD now, the Blackmagic app records straight to the SSD. File management is super quick, super easy. I can just pull the drive out, get it into the Mac and I'm off to the races. It works a dream and it is such an improvement. What I can't believe though, is that I'm now shooting on a phone when I've got a Canon sitting just behind it doing nothing. The Canon's not going to be completely retired. The B-roll or most of the B-roll that you saw on this video was shot on the Canon using a 50mm lens, which I absolutely adore. It gives me some fantastic product shots and some slow-mo shots. But for the A-roll, the head-to-camera, me talking, I, I, I can't believe how good this looks. Now I'm confident editing ProRes log footage. This is going to be the camera that you're going to see all of the footage on on the channel this year. Let me know if you think I've made a right choice on it. I think it looks so much better. And if I can do it, I promise you, I don't know that much about this stuff. I just taught myself. I did make a video about editing ProRes Log on the iPhone. You'll find it on my channel. I'll leave a card for it at the end as well. But try and take time to learn. It is amazing. The best camera you've got, they say, is the one you've got with you. We've all got our iPhones with us all the time. And if you're lucky enough to have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you have got the same tools that I've got, the same tools that Apple had to make that wonderful video of theirs. Unlock it, unleash the beast. It really is worth using. But let me know what you think of the footage. I'd be really keen to know. Thank you so much for watching. I've been wanting to make this video for time because I still can't get my head around it. I'm using a phone rather than a camera, but it's better. Where do you think is it going next? What will come on iPhone 16? How much better can it be? Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribing, notifications, all of that good stuff. Super thanks if you really enjoyed it. Helps me an awful lot. And if you have enjoyed it, the good news is I'll be back next week with another video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you real soon.